Thank you. And I call on the Minister, Shirley Ann Somerville. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This government has made a firm commitment to those who want to study at college and university in Scotland that access must be based on the ability to learn, not the ability to pay. We restored free education for first-time undergraduates, which helps more than 120,000 students studying in Scotland every year. Indeed, the chair of the Independent Review of Student Support, Jane Ann Gadia, commented, the Scottish Government's focus on funding tuition fees for social and economic prosperity is to be commended. More full-time higher education students than ever are receiving support, a total, a total of 143,110 in 2016-17, up 1.5% from 2015-16. Meanwhile, in the 2018-19 further education budget is at record levels of over £111 million for college bursaries, childcare and discretionary funds, a real terms increase of 34% since 2006-07. But I know there is much more to be done to build a fairer future for all, and that is why the Scottish Government established the review of student support. I'd like to formally state on the record my thanks to the independent chair, Jane Ann Gadia, and the review board members. It was essential for the, the government to take some time to consider the recommendations, particularly where there are complex interactions such as with the social security systems. I've already welcomed the report's central premise of creating a student support system around the key values of fairness, parity and clarity. I want Scotland's student support system to be focused on the poorest students, and this complements our wider ambitions to reduce child poverty and to widen access to university. In response to the review, I wrote to the convener of the Education and Skills Committee on the 9th of June, outlining a number of significant announcements to improve student support, including an additional £21 million per year by the end of this parliament is to be invested in improving student support over the parliamentary term. As part of that, investment of over £5 million will be provided in 2018-19 to increase bursaries for full-time care experience students to £8,100 per year, as per the review's recommendation of funding equivalent to the living wage. The further education care experience bursary will increase from £4,185 to £8,100, and the higher education care experience bursary will rise from £7,625 to £8,100 per year. This step is of particular significance as it takes the support available to care experienced HE and FE students to a level that is equivalent to the real living wage. Support equivalent of the real living wage was, of course, a key part of the recommendations of the review, and we share the review's ambition to achieve this level of support for all students and are pleased that we have been able to deliver this in the first instance for care experienced students. We will also invest £16 million in 2019-20 to increase further in higher education bursaries for students from the lowest income families and expand access to them. And I'm pleased to provide more detail today. In order to support access to bursaries for students from the poorest families, we will raise the higher education bursary income threshold from £19,000 to £21,000 from 2019-20. We will also increase bursary support for the poorest young students in higher education from £1,875 per year to £2,000, which combined with raising, with raising the HE bursary threshold will benefit 13,500 students. Further to that, we will increase bursary support for the poorest independent students in higher education from £875 per year to £1,000 per year, which will benefit nearly 18,000 students. This combined improvement will result in around 31,000 higher education students benefiting from an improved package of support. For students in further education, we will increase bursary support so that in 2019-20, students can receive a bursary of up to £4,500 per year benefiting over 7,000 students. In addition to that, from 2019-20, we will ensure that all eligible further education students aged 19 and over receive a guaranteed bursary award. This means that the students will not face the postcode lottery effect, which NUS Scotland has a long campaign to end. Taken together, these changes also increase the total support package available to students and represents the first step towards realising the ambition of delivering the equivalent of the real living wage to students. Additional funding will also be provided to support another key area and I have asked the Student Awards Agency Scotland to lead on improvements to information, advice, guidance and financial literacy. 
The aspiration will be to offer a joined-up approach for further and higher education, as well as to build on the good work already underway in schools and for parents and guardians. The ambition is a combined online portal for student finance information during the 2019-20 academic year. Now, I recognise there will be some students who are unable to access advice online, and I want to ensure that we provide this via other means too. We will also seek to improve financial literacy with increased guidance on student loans, budgeting and repayment terms. I want to ensure that students are supported not, during, not just during their studies, but after they graduate too. As part of our programme for government, we committed to raising the repayment threshold for student loans to £22,000 by the end of this parliament. However, we have gone further than this. I'm pleased to confirm that the loan repayment threshold will be increased to £25,000 from April 2021, reducing monthly loan repayments for thousands of Scottish graduates. A number of system and legislative adjustments are required to practically deliver on this commitment and Scottish Government officials are engaging with key stakeholders to undertake this work. I will also bring about forward legislation to reduce the maximum repayment period for student loans from 35 to 30 years by the end of 2018. I will now move on to outline this Government's response to some of the other specific recommendations. The review reported unfair and inflexible attendance criteria in colleges. Over recent months, the Scottish Funding Council and NUS Scotland have worked closely to make improvements for this coming academic year. The Scottish Government wants a system in place in which bursary awards are based on students' engagement in their studies, taking clear account of their personal circumstances, be that caring responsibilities or other important factors such as mental and physical health. NUS Scotland has stated that this is a huge win for students and gives students' associations the backup they need in challenging unfair policies at a local level. We have also made clear a commitment to supporting college and universities' students' and mental health and well-being. In March 2018, we confirmed over £250,000 funding to NUS Scotland for their Think Positive mental health project across Scotland's campuses. We are committed also to making university and college campuses places where students can live, study and research free of sexual harassment and gender-based violence. And we have provided an additional £396,000 to implement a new toolkit to address gender-based violence on campus. We are also clear that there is an essential role to be played by college and university staff in providing valuable advice to students to access financial support. And we want to see that face-to-face -face support and advice continue and to grow. The review made clear that there are a number of areas it was unable to consider. And as a result, there are some recommendations that I am committed to further investigating. A new approach for students who are eligible to remain on social, secu social security benefits while studying was recommended. Negotiations on this is required with the Department of Work and Pensions and work has commenced in this area with early exploratory discussions with DWP underway. The aspiration here is clear, ensuring that no prospective student is disadvantaged or discouraged from undertaking studies due to a potential loss of social security benefits to which they are entitled while studying. Following the review's recommendations, we are also committed to reviewing all non-core and discretionary support. We have already provided over £7 million in discretionary funding for further education students in this academic year, and over £16 million will be invested for higher education students in 2018-19. We will also look at support for part-time and disabled students and for carers. This will take account of significant investment we already provide to support students with additional needs. Universities receive funding from the Scottish Funding Council to ensure institution and course provision is more inclusive for students with additional needs. A total of £20.8 million was allocated to the universities in the academic year 16-17. Colleges have access to a £50.5 million access and inclusion fund to help them achieve parity of outcomes for all students at college. The student voice is essential in this process and we will launch a consultation to hear the views of learners. I would expect this work to commence in the new academic year. The review called for parity across further and higher education with the introduction of loans to further education. It gathered valuable evidence including highlighting the cases of students using credit cards or payday loans to supplement income. This cannot and will not be ignored. Independent research focused on distinct groups of students will Independent research focusing on distinct groups of students will commence soon and report by the end of 2018. 
This will provide an evidence base on demand and concerns. And I will be able to consider this recommendation further once we have a solid evidence base to underpin that consideration. Finally, we have noticed the review's findings that students want more choice over the timings of their payments. Higher education students in particular would like 12 monthly payments rather than just over term time. This will require engagement with the student loans company and with the Department of Work and Pensions to ensure no negative consequences for students receiving social security benefits. In summing up, Presiding Officer, I'm very pleased to have been able to share with this chamber today our commitment to improve student support for our most disadvantaged students and to provide more detail on care experience bursaries. I recognise that there are a number of areas that require further work and have outlined how these will be taken forward. And as I have made clear throughout this statement, any changes being introduced or considered are with the poorest students at the forefront of my thinking. I want to ensure that any prospective student, regardless of their background, are equipped with what they need to fulfil their potential. I absolutely agree with Jane Ann Gadia when she said that education has the power to transform lives. I believe that the changes we have introduced and are considering will help do just that. Thank you. Uh, that was quite a detailed statement from the Minister. I'm conscious the previous statement overran. Uh, so just to be aware, this won't affect the opening questioners, but could ask all questioners to make sure, the subsequent questioners, to make sure their questions are succinct, and similarly, perhaps the Minister in her answers. Starting with Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Minister for early sight of the statement. And can I welcome uh, many aspects of that statement, particularly in the context of what I think the lessons are to be learned from Professor Sir Ian Diamond's report on similar issues in student support in Wales, and obviously from the report from Jane Ann Gadia. Student support is never an easy area of policy making, especially in an increasingly complex world of further and higher education, and I think we need to be mindful of making hasty comparisons across the board. That said, however, I want to ask the Minister three key questions. Firstly, in relation to the increase in bursary support for the poorest students in higher education, the Minister is stating that this will rise from 1,875 to 2,000, but in 2013 the figure was 2,640, so the 2,000 will still be 640 below what it was five years ago. And can I ask whether the Minister really believes that that is acceptable? Secondly, could I ask the Minister ex to explain why the full range of changes are not going to be made until 2021? when the Scottish Government does actually have the power to make these changes before then. And thirdly, in relation to part-time students who have made very earnest representations to the Scottish Government that they should receive greater focus, not least because of their importance in expanding the flexibility of the economy, it is disappointing to see that they receive only scant mention at the end of the statement. Could I ask the Minister to at least explain the principles that she is examining for part-time support? Minister. Well, can I begin with the, the aspect around part-time students, because it is a very, very important one. The review itself, uh, that was chaired by Jane Ann Gadia, didn't look at part-time uh, students, and um, that was something which they could have done, but they had a great deal, as you've said, uh, as, the, as the member has said, it, it's a very complex area. So that's an area that didn't get round to, um, and they've asked the Scottish Government to look at. We will uh, do that um, during that consultation process that I mentioned that will begin um, later this year. The timescales, um, I'm afraid the member is incorrect. We simply don't have the powers to be able to enact uh, much of these changes themselves. Uh, many of it will require changes from the student loans company. Uh, some of it will actually require changes at a UK government level, and that's particularly around um, looking at the, the loan um, that we are looking to build for Scottish students, because that will have to be a, a distinctly separate um, offer. And we simply do not have um, the ability within the legislative that's, uh, legislation powers that are devolved to Scottish Cabinet to be able to, to do that. Uh, when it comes to the, um, the level of higher education um, bursaries, changes were made um, in 2013-14, um, which focused on um, the level of funding in its totality that was uh, made available to students. That was something that was done at the time um, with the support of NUS Scotland, but I do recognise that times have moved on from that, and that's exactly why we're taking the steps today to increase the bursary for uh, the poorest students uh, moving into higher education, listening to some of the concerns that have came from NUS Scotland. Ian Gray. 
Uh, my thanks to the Minister for early sight of her statement. There are indeed some things to welcome here, uh, the raising of the care leavers bursary and uh, more consistent support at last for FE students. Uh, the review wanted to see a shift in balance from loans back to grants for HE students, but the government told them they must abide by financial restraints. Yet, they still have a core recommendation which was that all students should have access to the equivalent of the real living wage, £8,100. That was not an ambition, Minister. That was a hard recommendation of your review. Why has the government refused to provide this support for students in general? Uh, meanwhile, as uh, Liz Smith pointed out, the increase in HE grants does not even restore them to what they were in 2013. In real terms, in fact, over £3,000 when this government slashed those grants by 35%, no matter how you dress this up. This is the government who promised to abolish debt but ye and doubled it instead, and yet again, it is going to pile even more debt onto students. Why won't the minister just do the right thing and restore grants to the levels the SNP found them at when they came to power? Minister. Uh, I think I would, would have uh, uh, some more time for Ian Gray's um, statements and questions around this. If during the budget negotiations that we went through this, the Labour Party came forward with one call to actually make this um, happen, and not based on the fantasy figures uh, relying on numbers where we couldn't even raise the money that the Labour Party had wanted. So when the Labour Party comes forward uh, with credible options for public finance, then I will take more seriously the call for the Scottish Government to spend more money. We are delivering on the Scottish Government's manifesto commitments that we made at the last election, which was based around um, the income threshold um, and was based around the terms of the loan. And that is being done. And we are looking very seriously at how we can help those, as I've said once again during the statement and in questions to Liz Smith, around how we can address the concerns around some of the poorest families about um, how they can access higher education. That's why we're taking the steps of introducing um, more than £21 million additional support for financial support um, during this par parliamentary term, focused on those poorest students, and that will have an effect and a reassurance to them that we're taking their concerns very seriously. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Alison Harris. Okay, thank you. As the Minister outlined in her statement, NES Scotland has long campaigned against the postcode lottery effect um, in terms of further education bursary support. Can she expand any further on how today's announcement will put an end to that and, crucially, how these changes will be communicated to our students to ensure the most vulnerable don't miss out? And I remind members and the PLO to the Education Secretary. Minister. Well, I think it will be um, a, a welcome um, development that we are looking to ensure that we have a, a guaranteed bursary that's available for further education students. Part of the concern that came through, not just from NUS Scotland, but from other members of the review group, was this, um, as they described, a postcode um, lottery. And that's why we've taken the, the, the decision to ensure that all eligible full-time students in further education that are over 18 will have that guaranteed bursary. And I think that will make a great deal of difference to them. It will only make a great deal of difference to them if we can highlight to them the availability of that funding, which is why we are also um, investing in um, improving the information, advice and guidance that's coming through, because the review once again heard um, how very, very complex the system was and how that did put people off coming into courses, uh, particularly within further education. So the work that SAS is um, undertaking for an online portal for student finance will be very, very important as we develop that and encourage um, students and their families uh, to have up-to-date information about what's available for them. Alison Harris to be followed by Joanne Lamont. Thank you. I welcome the commitment made to look at providing more support for disabled students and carers. Can the Minister outline what principles will underpin this commitment and whether this, effect, this will affect their access to existing support, such as the Disabled Students Allowance and the Loan Parent Grant? Minister. Well, I'm very much looking forward to the consultation that, that um, will happen later this year because we're looking at all the barriers that will impact on disabled students um, and on carers. Now, some of them will be financial, uh, but not all of them um, will be. And it's important that we look at this um, 
with, for each um, demographic of student to find the specific barriers that are affecting them. So the principles that will be behind that consultation is to ensure that we're looking at the specific needs um, of individuals and within groups of student. Um, we are, we already, as the member um, said during her, her question, supporting um, students with um, disabilities um, through further and higher education but we need to ensure that they're getting that money in the right way and in a timely way because one of the other issues that's been brought up is that students are perhaps receiving that support too late once they start um, and I'm very uh, that's why I'm I'm very very determined to look at all the barriers and not just the level of funding uh, that's in place. Joanne Lamont to be followed by George Adam. Thank you. Um, I note the Minister's comment that she shares the ambition of the review to achieve student support at the level of the real living wage. Can she outline the timescale and staging posts on the way to her realising that ambition? And given the financial pressure right now when people are making a decision about whether to go to college or university, can she explain why the changes in bursaries will not be implemented until this time next year? And will she explain why the important and straightforward issue of raising the threshold for the repayment of student loans to £25,000 will not happen until 2021, a full three years away? Why are these changes being implemented? Ms. Lamont, that's too many questions, please, Minister. Um, it's simply not a straightforward um, 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 decision for government to be able to, to take this forward because as I said I think in my response to Liz Smith it requires an entirely um, different student loans package to be built up by the student loans company. This is therefore not our time scale but the earliest opportunity that the student loans company has said um, that would have to do it. Now England did it last year as Ian Gray said they did and they have a much um, higher interest um, rate to go with that. Um, it is simply unachievable to be able to do this at a different um, time frame unless the Labour Party are suggesting that we take that higher interest rate which is already impacted on, on students. Uh, but I will ensure that this is done um, in as quick a way possible um, as, we can, uh, as, as we can deliver upon it. The year um, that is required to introduce the bursary changes is again a legislative uh, requirement to ensure that that's done um, and then that will be done um, for the next academic year directly um, after that. And the decisions um, for bursaries and for loans uh, for future years will be taken as part of the budget process. George Adam to be followed by Andy Whiteman. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister tell us what discussions the Scottish Government had with the Commissioner for Fair Access regarding further work on student finance? Minister. Well, the Commissioner didn't look at student finance as the Commission for Fair Access had um, requested that um, they did, uh, because there was a significant review um, ongoing under Jane Ann Gadia's chair. Uh, the Commissioner did meet with Jane Ann Gadia uh, a number of times during that review itself, however. Um, he will now consider whether further work is required in that area, but as the Commissioner is independent for government, um, his work plan and his timetable for that uh, will be for him to advise Parliament rather than me. Andy Whiteman to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the Minister's commitment to more support for higher and further education students with additional support needs. Following her response to Liz Smith, does the Minister agree that more part-time college courses are a key means to making access more inclusive? And can she confirm that the specific question will be part of the consultation with learners? Yes, sir. Part-time college courses um, are exceptionally important, particularly for um, more mature learners, and that's exactly um, why um, they continue to um, 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 hold the majority of courses that we raise within um, our colleges. And the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that part-time students um, have the advantages both within further and higher education to be able to take up those. That's something we are determined um, to look at within the consultation because I'm very determined to ensure that it's not just um, young learners who can access part-time um, courses uh, but returners to education as well. Willie Rennie to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Um, I too uh, welcome aspects of this report, including the provisions on mental health, but also raising the repayment threshold. Uh, we've heard about the, the level of debt and how it's increased in recent years. Does the Minister think there's a connection between that and the access from pupils, from students from disadvantaged backgrounds to university? Is that the, right, the reason why it's fallen? Minister. 
Um, well, it is very important that we look into what we can do for um, the different demographics of students, as I've said in earlier answers, and that will also ensure that we are responding to the needs that are, um, of students who are coming um, from families who perhaps don't have a background in higher education um, and perhaps from some of the, the poorest families. Um, we have focused my, um, our work, therefore, and the government's response to this in ensuring that we deliver for um, students who are coming from some of the poorer households uh, that's why the increases um, that we're making to bursary and to the income threshold are so important in that process. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Presiding officer, I warmly welcome the government's commitment to increase support for our care experienced students, acknowledging the significant barriers they face not just accessing but remaining in education. Would the minister agree we have a special responsibility to our care experienced young people, since for many of them we will continue to have a parental role in their lives after they leave care? Yes, I very much do recognise uh, the challenges that have been faced by uh, care experienced students when they're accessing further and higher educations. Um, and I would uh, like to put on record my thanks for, to Who Cares Scotland um, for the, the time that they have spent with me um, and for the time the care experienced uh, students have spent with me in talking through the difficulties and the challenges that they have faced um, in um, accessing further and higher education. Um, and I'm pleased that they are um, satisfied with the work uh, that's ongoing um, so far. This does, of course, build on the First Minister's commitment to care experience young people and we do recognise that within Scottish Government um, and our agencies that we have to recognise our responsibilities. That's why the Scottish Funding Council and uh, SAS are taking this on to ensure that when we're developing new services we are doing so uh, with care experience um, students and care experience applicants taking part in the processes where we make these changes uh, so we can actually deliver on something uh, which benefits um, our, our young people as they go forward into our colleges universities. Murdo Fraser to be followed by Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister talked about her party's record in government on student support. So when will the 2007 manifesto commitment to wipe out all student debt be delivered, or was this just another empty pre-election promise? Minister. The Scottish Government was elected with commitments to decrease the terms of loans and increase the threshold for loans, and we are delivering on that today. Ivan McKee to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Uh, thank you. Can the Minister outline what impact the Education Maintenance Allowance, which was scrapped south of the border, is making to those from our disad most disadvantaged communities, such as in my own constituency of Glasgow Province? Minister. Well, we did widen the eligibility for education maintenance allowance in January 2016 to ensure that more students from lower income households could take advantage of the financial support and remain in education. As a result of those changes, the widened criteria has made a real impact on the number of young people who would otherwise not have been supported. There has been a big increase in the number of EMA recipients from the 20 most deprived areas. So 36.8 are now from those areas, up from 34.9 previously. Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you, President Officer. It's Carers Week, Minister, so I'm wondering why there's nothing in the statement for students with caring responsibilities. Why the delay and when will she fulfil the promise she made to students with caring responsibilities? Minister. Uh, this was also an area which the review of student support um, did not look at um, in detail, and that's why I've committed uh, to ensuring that the Scottish Government will take on um, a, a consultation later this year. Uh, but that does not mean that we are not looking to see what we can do to improve uh, the situation. And indeed, um, this morning I attended um, a, a fair access um, conference um, uh, run by the Scottish Funding Council and they heard directly uh, from um, individuals with uh, caring experience and the impact that that has been having and that course was widely attended by many people from across the university and college sector. So we are looking to see what can be done in the short term but we will look very closely at what comes back from the consultation uh, to see if there are um, other changes to policy which require to be made. And Tom Arthur. Can the Minister outline any plans the Government has to highlight these changes to our students to ensure that they are receiving the support that they will be entitled to? Minister. Well, this is where the Students Awards Agency Scotland um, will do a great deal of work with students um, as they um, apply uh, for funding in future years. It is very, very important that we make this um, complex area of further and higher education 
um, support um, as simple and as accessible in terms of information as possible. And I look forward to the online portal, uh, which SAS will provide um, later um, in the next couple of years. Thank you very much. That concludes our statement. My thanks to the Minister and to members for their succinct questions and replies. We'll just move on to the next item of business, but we'll take a few moments to change seats for the Minister to change seats.